So here's the gift that we picked up to swap in the Malibu. I mentioned in one of my earlier videos that I was going to use a Fox Body 88 that I got on half price day. Well, half price day came again. I was doing a bunch of research and somebody mentioned on one thread, I don't even remember, probably one of the G Body forums, that a Crown Vic center section was a lot closer in dimensions than uh, one out of a Fox body. And I'm this is I'm pretty much doing this to get around buying the baseline or the TRZ relocation kit for the 88. So I went, me and my helper, we went and we grabbed on this half price day uh, an 88. It's out of a Crown Vic, 96 Crown Vic, I think it was. And as you can tell, I'll probably post up a comparison picture at the end, but see how high those ears are? Those are exactly the same height as a G-body rear end. From the center of the axle to the, to the center of the hole, it's exactly the same height. The spacing is a little bit wider, but what I might end up doing is hammering these bushings in or making one of those Lakewood anti-hop things where they move them up a little higher and I'll just move them in a little bit, something like that. Uh, the diff is really wide, it's like 65 inches wide, but from the, the mounting face where the bottom bolt goes to the mounting face where the bottom bolt goes is within quarter inch of what the G-body is. It's got mounting pads for the springs, I'm probably going to have to cut those off, move them in or out. I'm going to weld the axle tubes. On the G body, the shocks are on the back like a Fox body, so on this, it's at the front, so I'm just going to chop out this thing so I can use the factory sway bar. And then I'll just have to, I'm probably just going to weld them onto the back here and the shock will go right here with a stud. Uh, like I was saying, this diff is a lot wider, so this diff came with Posi, and what I ended up doing is I got Explorer axles, Explorer brakes, Explorer backing plates, and since it's pick and pull and they don't really give a shit, I hacked off the ends of an Explorer diff. Because the difference between the Explorer diffs and the car diffs is it uses a bigger bearing on the outer end with the bigger axle. So I got two short side axles, two backing plates, two calipers, two rotors, I picked the best pads that I could get from the junkyard. Brake hoses are uncut, so I can reuse those. Um, and then I got the side gears from two explorers to put in the center section. So then I took the center section and I took all the, the, the frictions out. And I always save the old frictions when I'm upgrading people's discs to the carbon clutches and stuff. So this is completely filled with steels. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fill this little hole with weld. I don't even have to touch the rest of the spider gears and that in itself will jam up the gears because everybody that knows that's rebuilt a, a, G, a Ford Posi, these are splined. So if you weld these, it's just going to jam it up in here against the case and take a lot of pressure off the pin, which is ends up what breaks on these things when you weld them. They usually break the case or break whatever. So that's what I'm going to do with that. Weld it in here, weld it in here, roll it over, weld it in here, weld it in here, and it'll be jammed up good enough that it'll be like a mini spool, and I won't have to worry about shattering spider gears on the launch. Uh, this diff came with two 7.3s. I'm probably going to leave them. Uh, I'm not totally sure if I'm going to swap to a different set of gears, but... Two 7.3s with a 26 inch tall tire will probably work pretty well. Uh, so what I'm going to end up doing is jigging up my rear end, cutting the housing end off to get it the same diameter as this, because these are actually a little bigger. These have bigger axle tubes, they're three and a quarter, these are three inch. So somewhere in the mix between shortening this and cutting those off, I'm going to make one diff out of it. That's going to be 56 and a half inches wide, like the same as a narrowed Explorer. But so that ends up being three quarters of an inch narrower each side than the stock diff that's in there. But it all should work. So all of this stuff. So 
the side gears, the diff, the axles with disc brakes, bearings, everything. I paid $117 for on half price day. They charge you a lot extra for the, the disc brakes and stuff, but I figured it was still cheaper to get the disc brakes from the junkyard. I picked the best out of all the explorers that we messed with and uh, we did that. So the next thing I'll be doing is I'll post up a picture of us cutting down the housing, uh, narrowing it up and putting it all back together. But the only thing I think I'm gonna end up, this thing came with an aluminum diff cover too, which really for me, it doesn't matter. I'm not really trying to save weight on my diff cover, but uh, the next thing I'll be doing is narrowing it up, welding the axle tubes. And then the really the only new things I'm gonna put in is two axle seals, cause I can't take those ones apart without wrecking the axle seals, but I'm gonna try to reuse the bearings. And then I'm gonna cut all the e-brake shit off just because it's ugly and I'm not going to use any of that shit. So the next part of the video will be me cutting the housing down and making that part work. All right, so we got the alignment bar in. Uh, this is my rear end ruler. You get these from uh, Lead Mine Products. I think he's on eBay. Uh, my jig, is, my alignment punks, pucks are from him too. So we put all that stuff in. I cleaned up the axle tube ends. I welded both axle tubes. You go a little bit at a time or else you'll turn your axle into a noodle. So I usually do a quarter at a time, starting with whatever way the axle's already twisted. Uh, normally, I've, I've almost never had a diff that was pretty straight to begin with. They're always a little bit from having weight of the car or all that kind of stuff along with it and then this thing just has a bunch of different settings it doesn't it's really dirty so the bottom two widest holes that's axle length for 31 spline the ones above it are 28 spline the middle skinny line is is a uh, diff center line and then the top corner one is pinion center line so you can kind of figure out what you got uh, the explorer axles are 27 and 3 quarter inches long each from that mark to the face of the axle. So that plus a two and a half inch brake offset minus one inch thick my axle ends are, I ended up cutting the housing at 24 and a quarter inches. So you can see in there where I, I cut it down and this is already the Explorer end tacked on to the, to the housing. So we did that. Here's the difference in the axle. So this is a Explorer end. What I ended up doing is chucking it up in my lathe, but you could just cut it off. So from this, from this edge to the face is one inch. So it just made it easier to do the math. And I ended up pressing out the bearing and the seal. So I'm just gonna reuse the seal too, just to save every dollar I can. This is the housing end that I cut off. And how I was talking about earlier, how there's a difference in axle size, like these things are gigantic compared compared to the other one. So it's a lot bigger. This is what I ended up cutting off for length. It's almost six inches I cut off of the, the axle tube bend. So I put it all back together. Uh, I usually use a, a hose clamp to mark the housing. So I'll just, I'll just clamp a hose clamp on it. You can see where I, I've already started scoring the housing where I'm cutting it here. Grind off all the shit before you start doing this. It makes life a little bit easier. So I just ground it off, cut it uh, 24 and a quarter inches and uh, and then you just cut it off, clean up the end and then line it up. And then I just use one of my angle finders, put two long 3 8 bolt bolts in it so it clears the housing. And I just set these at 90 degrees to the back cover or the pinion, either or they should be the same. And then you can see that the axle's just a little bit smaller in diameter. I cleaned it up on the lathe so I had really something good to weld to. So I should be able to get a pretty decent corner bead in there. And then as I'm going, I just turn this bar. And if it goes tight, I start welding on the opposite side of where, where I, was welding and it'll usually pull it back into place so 
So there's that part. Uh, the next part, I'll probably have it show you it mostly back together with the brakes on and stuff. And uh, we'll go from there. All right, skip forward a little bit. Uh, the 88 is in the car. Uh, I did it over the weekend after I put the engine and tranny in. So we smashed it all back together. I reused the axle bearings from the Explorer ends. I reused the axle seals from the Explorer ends. Uh, pretty much reused everything except for a couple of brake lines and some oil. And uh, got it back in. Here it is in the car. This is probably the world's cheapest 88 swap. I got, I took the core back because I got the, the problem I normally have is when I do these things, I, I run out of time and I can never return the core for the, the axle. So we returned the stock Malibu diff and I got 25 bucks plus all their fees and stuff for it. So I literally have less than a hundred dollars into this complete swap. So there you see the aluminum Crown Vic cover. It's still got the factory G body sway bar. Um, what did I ended up having to do? You can see it right there. It says 10 inches. Uh, the factory upper G body control arm is 11 inches from the center of the hole to the center of the hole. And I had to shorten it an inch to get the pinion angle right. And then I also drilled out the control arm to the bolt size that the, the, Crown Vic control arms are, or I think the Fox body ones are the same, they're a half inch bolt or something close to there. So I drilled that out, cut them off a little shorter, got the pinion angle exactly where I, I wanted it, and that worked out. So, so I welded the axle tubes like I, I said before, uh, ended up using, so all I had to end up doing was adding a little piece of flat bar right here. And I just welded it to the back because the Crown Vic has it, has it like up here, the shock. So that's all I really had to do with that. This is a clevis off of a, a Fox body. Uh, I grabbed those when I was at the junkyard. So it turns the shock 90 degrees of, from where the G body has it. So we just turned them sideways, took an old lug nut, cut a, a, a shanked lug nut, cut it off, stuck it inside the shock, put it back together. Those are actually... Uh, accessory bolts tensioner bolts i think for a for a ls so we put that together stock brake line on that side when i was at the junkyard i always get i try to get two passenger side brake hoses because on these they have the the brake hose goes normally goes to here and then it's the same hose and it goes off to the frame well that doesn't work most of the time for people because you want to use the brake hose that came on the car so you don't have to mess with the brake lines on the body side because anytime you deal with rusty old cars the last thing you want to be doing is messing with stuff that you don't have to you can kind of let's see where we are at here so there's oh can you see it i just welded a bolt to the back side of the axle tube and then that's the factory brake hose that goes up to there there's a quick shot of my fuel system so there's the 044, and then it's got a little tiny Edelbrock filter. I bought about 10 of them years ago because they were my local speed shop was blowing them out for eight or nine bucks a piece. And then it just goes forward. And the two lines that go towards the bottom of the screen go to my fuel sender. So the small line is the return, and the big line just loops around here and goes to the goes to the pump. And then I'll see if I can come on this side. And you can see up here, that's the stock feed for the fuel system. So, and then that little line there is just the canister vent solenoid or canister, charcoal canister. That's right. So yeah, you can see it up here. There's my fuel system, red wires everywhere. And it goes back into there, dash eight and dash six. Uh, what else? On this Crown Vic diff, the factory spring pads, you can see I welded a nut on here to hold the, the brake line on. So I just welded a little nut and tightened it down. But the brake, the, the spring pads are within half an inch of the G-body stuff. 
and the upper control arms are in the exact same position so this is the correct geometry for a g-body car the upper control arms are a little bit wider i hammered them in but there's enough give in the up, uh, rubber upper control arm bushings that it wasn't that big of a deal like it, it'll eventually because they don't swing in a proper arc because they're a triangulated four link so you just got to get them at the right spot when you put the diff in and it'll line up so like i said factory sway bar works we just had some scrap one and a half inch by eight tubes so i just boxed in the lower control arm because if you know how the a four link geometry works the uppers pull so when the diff twists so when you launch the upper pulls and the lower pushes so the lower will twist up like a pretzel whereas the upper doesn't have to be as strong as it pulls on the launch so I didn't really do anything to the uppers other than shortening them but the lowers I added the plate in left the sway bar did all that kind of stuff so that's all good it's got the original shocks you can kind of see the caliper just kind of clears I'm trying to get better lighting with that so I used when I got this diff I got everything down to the lug nuts like I didn't want to buy lug nuts I didn't want to buy anything all that stuff is free when you buy the diff for $118 and then I got probably about 26 bucks back 28 bucks back with the core I have to do the exact math I, I just did it today if you see my Instagram I posted a picture of all the stuff I returned from this car the original drive shaft because I got the Aerostar one and they also they charged me a $10 core on the intercooler so I just returned the piece that I cut off like the bottom six inches of the intercooler and they didn't really seem to care so let's see so yeah let's see if we can move the light over you can see that the the caliper bolt is probably a quarter inch away from the shock but that part doesn't move so you don't really have to worry about that the rest of it has adequate clearance uh, so yeah that's that so I ended up getting when we pulled the diff out of the Crown Vic I got the Crown Vic wheels off of it too they were nine bucks a piece they're 15 by six and a half or seven or something like that but they match the front ones pretty much identical the front ones look a lot shittier but and they're 14s but pretty much the identical identical wheel combination so that'll be my street tires and then i'm gonna scrounge up some slicks or drag radials or something for that part oh yeah i was gonna show so this was the drive shaft so one end has 1350 so this this end is 1350 that goes into the drive shaft and this end is like the GM S44, 3R, whatever you guys call, whatever people call it. And then I just have a, I put a conversion U joint to 1350. And I got this flange with the diff when I swapped it at the junkyard. It's off an F150. F150s have 1350 U joint stock. If you go to a drive shaft place, they charge you like 120 bucks just for this little piece. So I just go to the junkyard, take the, the 13. 10 or whatever it comes with on here cut off of a cut off of a, a, a f-150 drive shaft and just remove this piece uh these already had the bigger flange not like the the fox bodies that have the small flange so that just makes it way easier to convert and it's a way sturdier u-joint so i got the u-joint for like 20 bucks it's a skf or a moog or precision the part number is a 447 so it's a 1350 to uh, 3R, they call it, U-joint, which is the factory GM with the inside clips to a 1350. So that's that part. Here's my tranny mount. I'm gonna move, let's see if I got in my way. So this gives you a better idea. So when I put the ICT billet mounts in, half inch setback, all we ended up having to do, you can still see where I still marked it, drill a hole, in the cross member you can kind of see it there hammer it in cut the mount off the front on this side and that's that so that's that part um, I don't know what else I can show you under here Let's see if I can see any of the intercooler piping 
That's pretty dark. Not much to see. It looks like intercooler piping that I built excessively fast. Um, so yeah, Astrovan drive shaft works perfect. Proper length, like couldn't even be any better with the engine set at the half in half back mount. So there's more of the quick and dirty lower control arm reinforcements. Probably gonna get a football for it. I still have the rear sway bar, so I'm hoping that'll be enough. And it's got the cheapest 8090 in it, gear oil. I welded up the carrier like I was saying earlier in the video. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So that's the world's cheapest 88 swap with proper geometry with it being a little bit narrow. Thanks.